We're getting the exercise, right? God is good all the time. Can you say amen? But sometimes he doesn't seem that way. That's what I always like to let people know. And when you're in one of those places, keep praying, keep believing, keep seeking, because he'll press through that difficult place, and you'll come back to the place where he seems good again. And some get discouraged and fail, um, make mistakes during the times where God, sometimes God just hides himself because he likes to play hide and seek. He wants to hide so you will seek. And it's that simple. He's not playing a game. He just wants to keep you close to him. You say amen. And so over and over and over it says in the Bible to seek the Lord. Here in Luke 1, 17, or 1, 1, 17, here in Luke 1, verse 1. Uh, For as many as taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which is from the beginning, were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. It seemed good for me also, having had perfect understanding of all things, from the very first to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things which thou hast been instructed. Here Luke is writing. Luke is a physician. He's a doctor. He's an educated man. And uh, he's writing to someone else this letter, but he's wanting to put down what he knows, firsthand information is true, and what he believes about it. And what I say uh, in the title, what you may not uh, have realized about the Christmas story, the Christmas story is a story full of excitement, full of adventure, full of uh, life risking. They, they're really, these, these people have to risk their lives to do things for God. It's full of all types of interaction between God and man and angels and, and women are very much, prim, are very much primary uh, People that God uses in this story and it's it's just I, I just can't say enough about how exciting the Christmas story is don't ever let yourself get down in the dumps over being sad at Christmas time because you're maybe not with family or maybe it's not the way it used to be not the way you used to remember it as kids and or those types of things because when you start to realize that one of the greatest miracles that ever took place in the history of the universe not just one miracle, but multiple miracles in just a very short time period took place surrounding the birth of Christ. I was thinking the other day that in the Bible, when God raised up leaders in the Old Testament, he let them become young men before he revealed to people that they were a leader, before he did anything uh, demonstrative, anything that pointed to their uh, exceptional uh, personage, anything that made him look stand out or special, and in the Old Testament, they, they like think of David. David wasn't even picked out of all his brothers. Think of Joseph. Think of the different ones. They were men. They were they were they were some of them were young men. But in this case, God sending His Son into the world, He sent all of these confirming miracles just to surround all of it in this uh, great story. It's a wonderful story, and and I and I just can't say enough about it. So don't let yourself get down in the dumps because. Uh, uh, you're uh, not having a, a, a childhood Christmas. Some of us, if you grew up in my house, uh, my mom and dad made sure we had the best Christmas. They both grew up in almost poverty. And my dad remembers getting an orange for Christmas. And my mom got just, she always said they were Christian people and kind of old school in their thinking. And my mom remembers getting like a dress or something that she needed. And that was the only Christmas gifts. That they knew so for their kids they we had my brother and i oh my goodness so many wonderful christmases that we look back on and remember and uh but those are those are good memories good memories can haunt you you know that good memories can can be a a, a thing that will get you depressed and you you can't let them you got to thank god for them can you say amen you've got to be appreciative that god let you live through those things but then you got to move on. You, you, Apostle Paul at one point said, I put behind me childish things, and I press towards the things that God has for me. And Sometimes we have to do that. And, uh, and sometimes we can be blessed seeing how other people are getting blessed, even though we may not feel we're getting blessed right there. You say amen. So in this story, uh, we won't try to read all the scripture about it. I'm going to probably uh, drop down and, and read a scripture here or there as we go along in the book of uh, of Luke. But 
it really starts with a, an elderly couple that were not able to have a baby for a long time, um, Zechariah and Elizabeth. And an angel appears to uh, Zechariah and tells him that uh, he's going to father a child. And an argument develops and uh, in the sense of Zechariah says, how could I possibly uh, father a child? Gabriel announces his, his credentials. Hey, I'm, a, I'm Gabriel. I, I walk up and down before God. I'm, if, we, if we know our Bible, we know that Gabriel is one of the head angels. And uh, there's Gabriel and Michael, and then there was Lucifer at one time. Lucifer, as we know, fell away but, uh, and was cast down to earth in God's judgment against him. But Gabriel is like one of the top angels. He's like, I'm like the top guy, and you're arguing with me. Well, he didn't really put Zechariah down. He just told Zechariah, and Zechariah said, what, what will be the sign that this is going to happen? If God ever presses in on you, and he will at some time in your life, he will start to speak to you. He'll start to direct your life. He'll, he'll start to, he may give you some sort of a calling that's going to talk about you working for him one day full time and leaving whatever occupation. I can't tell you the number of pastors through the years that I've known that's been former engineers. I've met them that were former doctors. I've known them that have, have left these just simple uh, uh, vocations like being a carpenter or whatever. I, I, I need to keep working in my trade because I'm called by God to be what, like the Apostle Paul, a tent maker and uh, provide part of my income. I don't want to be a burden to anyone. And I do not want to be in a position where somebody controls what I say because they're paying, they're, they're running my paycheck. And some pastors feel that way. They, they, they feel like they can't preach all the truth God put them on, put on their heart because they're pastoring a church and they don't want to displease the board or they don't want to displease the congregation. But one of the things the Lord uh, has spoken to my heart is that he wants me to be just totally faithful to him and speak what he has given me to speak, write about what he's given me to write about. And, and, uh, just be concerned about what other people think, but not allow people to control me. Can you say amen and control what God's trying to do and say? And, uh, but in this case of, of Zechariah, he's looking for a sign. You may, you may want to know that God is, is it's God that's speaking to you. It's a good thing to put things to the test. Can you say amen? I can't tell you how many times through the years, uh, I, first of all, that I've seen that it's been bright. It's been God and God's done awesome things in my life. But there's been other times where it's just been me or it's been the enemy lying to my mind. And I've moved ahead with something thinking that I uh, was in God and found out that was just my own imagination and I, I made a mistake. Uh, so there are times that I wished I would have prayed through a little more. One of the, one of the most fascinating books I've ever read uh, was written by a, a, in, a, in an unlikely setting. You don't usually read a book written by somebody and said, these are the mistakes I've made. But David Wilkerson, the founder of Team Challenge, wrote a book once called Beyond the Cross and the Switchblade. And he tells in that book how that um, at one time in his life, he thought he was following God and he bought this big piece of land down in Orlando near Disney World. And he was going to make a third level Team Challenge, like a college. And and uh, he was just following God, following God. And 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 felt he was, and, uh, and God sent a Chinaman from China over here, flew him over here, a man that worked in prophetic ministry, to find David Wilkerson and tell him that he was out of God's will. Uh, David Wilkerson said, I immediately rebuked him, thought he was of the devil, didn't believe a word he said. And, and then over time, God began to deal with my heart, and he spoke to me, and he said, David, you're trying to build an epitaph unto yourself. You're trying to build a name unto yourself. This is not me. Well, David talks about, I think he lost it was like $50,000 or something of money that he had to put down. Some large amount of money. It may not have been that much, but it was a, a large amount of money that he lost in that, in that process. But, but he, he learned to pray more carefully the next time. He learned to press through a little harder. And when God does call us to do things, there's sometimes that it's very, very difficult to do those things he's calling us to do. It sometimes is a, it takes a big step. And so Zechariah was not out of God's will, uh, out of, even out of God's wisdom. Um, it's like God wasn't punishing him, but he was kind of sort of giving him a, a, a little bit of a, a spanking, if you will, or a little bit of a, a lesson. He said, the, the angel says, you're not going to be able to speak until the baby's born, and that's going to be the sign. And uh, uh, what I want to look at tonight as we go is that is that some, some of the things in the story, uh, the Christmas story surrounding the nativity, 
uh, are the, is the move of the sovereignty of God, sovereign things God is doing, but it's also being knit together with the free will of man. And I write in my article that anybody that tries to argue one point or the other, because I'll tell you, most Christians are either one extreme or the other. They either, they either are doing nothing in their life for God or with God, and they're just waiting for God to do something sovereign, or there's those out there that aren't so much looking for God to do something sovereign. They're just kind of following every whim and every thought and thinking it's God, and they're running ahead and 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 doing things like David Wilkerson, like I've done in my life, uh, and, and make mistakes. And what is what this story shows is that God works both of those things together in a beautiful, confirming way. Can you say amen? And when you see God start to move sovereignly in your life, and you see doors start to open. You see opportunities start to present themselves in a certain direction. Then it's up to your will to say yes to God as he speaks to your heart and walk through them. And that's what Zechariah had to do. Zechariah had to hear this and he had to go home to mama. Actually, if you read the story, it's interesting because he worked as a priest in a temple and he had to do certain duties. And he didn't just go right home after the angel said this, you know. If you've been away from home from mama for a while, sometimes you want to just get right home, you know, but he didn't. He stayed faithful to his calling. He did what he was normally called to do. And he went home and the Bible says that Elizabeth conceived and uh, she became pregnant. And so God is working and and, uh, and and there's about six months of time that passed and, and Gabriel appears then to Mary and tells Mary that she's going to have a baby and that his name is to be called Jesus. The other part of the story, Elizabeth and and uh, Zechariah, we know, is that uh, they said that his name would be John, becoming John the Baptist and the first cousin of Jesus. And Elizabeth is a, a relative of theirs. And um, so uh, it's a wonderful thing. Mary, when she gets that uh, calling from God, again, God doing something sovereignly, says, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you will conceive. Because she says, I... I'm a virgin, I, I, in so many words. She says, I've never been with a man. How's this going to happen? And God sub, does something supernatural. How many know God can do absolutely anything? And actually, that's what the angel said to Zechariah. With God, all things are possible. And we, we limit God many times by our, our thinking. He, he's not always limited by our thinking. It's possible to, to hinder the process of God if we, if we go too far in the wrong direction. But if if we're staying seeking the Lord, if we're asking God for direction and we're following that direction, we had a prophecy come in our church several weeks ago and it said that the Lord said that many people want to hear my voice, but they won't put themselves in a position where they can hear my voice. We got to many times set aside time. You say amen. We have some, even sometimes are called to fast. We're sometimes called to spend time in his word. We're uh, many times called to just focus on him, maybe it's involving to turn off the televisions. I know you guys don't have that here, but whatever things that would distract your life so you can put the Lord first. But but we have to be able to hear God and what God is saying, we should put it to the test. We should press it in, press into God. And, and many times it does uh, involve wisdom because Mary, if you notice, the Bible says she hastens, she goes in a hurry to Elizabeth. She hears that Elizabeth is going to have a baby, so she runs to Elizabeth and uh, uh, to a nearby town, and uh, and it, it's it's almost like we don't know the exact words. Well, we know some of the words because Mary, as she comes through Elizabeth's door and and gives her what the Bible calls a salutation or a greeting, uh, the Bible says that the baby inside of Elizabeth jumped. John the Baptist, uh, as a six-month-old, jumped, and. Uh, and then Mary was filled, or I'm sorry, Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost and began to prophesy. Now keep in mind, all these things are happening in the Christmas story, all within a period of, of weeks and months. It's just all coming together very rapidly. There's just so many things that happen surrounding the birth. You know, every single thing about Jesus Christ is confirmed, the Bible says, by many infallible proofs. Many infallible proofs that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And so God just, just takes this story and this entrance of the Messiah. He's fulfilling many Old Testament prophecies and coming to this world. 
He just does so many things surrounding his birth. He even has another baby be born. will grow up just to introduce Jesus, just to prepare people's hearts for Jesus coming. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight his path was John the Baptist's message. And God's just doing all this stuff. He's working all these miracles that are surrounding this Christmas story. He's just really putting his parentheses, his quotations, his underline under the fact, hey, people, wake up, you know. I'm sending my son to this world. This is the Messiah, and I'm confirming it by so many things. And there will not, you'll not find one single Bible story anywhere from Genesis to Revelation that involves so much of God's activity and intervention and interaction between angels and God and men than this story of the coming of Jesus Christ. Is it any wonder we so celebrate it? Is it any wonder that it's such a powerful and wonderful holiday? Is it any wonder that so much attention is given to it? You say amen. And it's the fact that God is, is just confirming, confirming, confirming to our hearts that this is the very Son of God coming to this world. God taking the form of a man. God becoming, or God, yes, becoming a baby. We don't understand all of that. There's no way our human minds can understand it. The Bible says, as the heaven is high above the earth, so is God's ways higher than our ways, right? Uh, we don't understand how that can happen. We don't understand what consciousness he may have had. You know, well, it goes inside that baby looking out going, here I am inside this little baby. You know, oh, I, you know I'm only this big, but I'm God. You know, I don't know. Who knows, right? <laughs> Who knows what he would, if he had that type of understanding. Uh, as, as he grew older, we get a little bit of uh, uh, hints that it was probably was more of a process. When he was 12, as we know, he was found in the temple teaching with the with the with the uh, uh, with the priests and and uh, saying, "Don't you understand? I must be about my father's business." But at that point in time, he had taken the form of a baby. He was being born. He was coming into this world, and so Mary goes running to Elizabeth's house. And uh, it's interesting to me, though it doesn't say it, it says she went at, her six, at the sixth month, and the Bible says she stayed three months. What is that? What is six and three equal? Nine months. I really believe she stayed until that baby was born. I really do. And it's okay to think that way sometimes, even though the Bible doesn't say it. Just don't ever declare it that you know it's the truth, right? But it's cool when you start to see this. And when you guys read, do you see the picture of the things happening the way I do? When I read, I just, I just envision all these things. I envision the players, what I think they look like, and how it's all happening. And it just makes reading so much more exciting and uh, so much more uh, desirable. So we see that Mary stayed three months. And, uh, uh, and then she returned and, and, of course, joined up with, with Joseph. Uh, Joseph, according to Matthew, uh, is also being introduced into the story. So far, we had Zechariah and Elizabeth, Mary, and now Joseph, according to Matthew, is, is being introduced in the, into, the, uh, into the picture. Matthew 1.20, uh, uh, the angel, Joseph is actually thinking about giving Mary a writing of divorcement or divorcing Mary. Back then, if, when you were engaged to a woman, Engagement was as strong a commitment as marriage was, or just, just almost. But in order to break off an engagement by Jewish tradition, you had to divorce them. And uh, Joseph, seeing Mary very pregnant by now, and knowing he wasn't the father, the Bible says that he's in a place where he's thinking about uh, giving her a writing, a, a writing of divorcement, divorcing uh, Mary and cutting off the relationship. Uh, can you imagine how difficult a calling, you know, we can talk about difficult callings. We can talk about God calling us to hard things. Once in a while, I have that conversation with the Lord. You guys have no idea, <laughs> but it seems like other people always have an easier calling than you have, right? But, uh, uh, but uh, there's, there's just, uh, um, there's times where it just seems very, very difficult. And, but, and, and there's, there's things that God is working out through every calling that we don't understand how important those things are. But Mary had to walk around with a big old belly knowing that she had not even been married yet. I'm sure people accused her of all kinds of things. And her very fiance, Joseph, was getting ready to divorce her. Now, it's interesting that the Bible says that the angel appeared unto Joseph. Can anybody tell me where the angel appeared to Joseph at? For years and years, I never even 
knew this. In a dream, exactly. Who said it? You said it, yes. He appeared in a dream. Matter of fact, he appears three times in a dream. And uh, I don't know if Joseph <laughs> had a hard time uh, handling an actual angelic appearance when he was awake, but God, we, it's a good lesson there. There's so many lessons in this. That the Bible, I think, is Proverbs. It says that uh, God speaks to men often in dreams while they're asleep and they're not distracted. Uh, if I've had God speak to me in dreams many times, and uh, when my when my when I was called to leave Jacksonville, Florida, I had moved down there in the uh, late '70s and working down there, and came to Christ down there, and God called me to move back north. Um, I was really praying for a confirmation about that, and um, I was kind of grumbling and complaining. I didn't really want to leave Jacksonville. The Lord was saying, "I'm going to return to you to the land of your fathers." because this whole region is where my family's from, south of here in Pennsylvania, and um, some of them scattered throughout New York, and and I was just saying, Lord, I, I just, I, man, I got to rent a van, I got to load up with this stuff, I didn't really have that much, but I, I just complaining, complaining. One night I had a dream, and in a dream, an angel spoke audibly to me and talked to me about going north and return to the land of your fathers, and I said to him, I said, you want me to uh, you want me to go back north he said i want you to sell everything and move back north and i said and then all of a sudden he had me i'm like you want me to sell everything and he said anything that's keeping you from going i'll never forget those words anything that's keeping you from going and uh of course he wasn't telling me to sell everything and i had no problem getting the van then to get the stuff together I didn't want to sell my stuff. You know, I was real spiritual back then. But anyway, still lack in many ways. But uh, but God will speak sometimes through dreams. And he spoke to Joseph and said, don't give your, don't give your wife a writing of divorcement. Don't divorce uh, your wife-to-be, Mary. Because uh, that, that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Now, remember how I said that this is a beautiful story of the will, free will of man interacting with the sovereignty of God? God doing things sovereignly that no man could do, that no woman could do, things that, that just, and, and fulfilling Old Testament prophecy. Like the Bible said that out of thee, uh, uh, Bethlehem, uh, shall come the, the Messiah, basically the Old Testament prophecy says. And, and how is God going to get Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem so that the baby will come out of Bethlehem? Well, a Roman uh, Taxation took place where it was time of the year where everybody had to return to their hometowns and they had to pay tax on for the year. And it just so happened that that place they had to go was Bethlehem. Again, God doing something sovereign through so many sovereign steps through, through angel, angelic from angelic appearances to the sovereign moves of God to even them having to flee at one point with a baby and go into Egypt. The Bible is another prophecy says he shall come out of Egypt to fulfill. How many know there's over 2,000 Bible prophecies fulfilled so far right now in 2021? Over 2,000 or about 2,000 according to Bible scholars that have been fulfilled exactly to the letter. Do you know what 2001 is on the biblical calendar? Jesus Christ returned in the rapture. The rapture is 2,000 is the is the is the 2001. Let me say it right. The prophecy number 2001, 2000 have already been fulfilled. The next one to be fulfilled is Jesus Christ coming back for his church. Can you say praise God? And so just as 2000 have happened, even though it seems like he's delayed in his coming and the Bible says that people say that, he's coming again for his church. Can you say amen? But anyway, back to the Christmas story. Uh, they uh, went to Bethlehem, the baby was born. And so you got all this interaction between God. Well, God wasn't finished yet. God wasn't finished yet. He sent, you know, I've had to do a lot of thinking about this and, and to make sure I believe it's true. But I believe that in a field that night outside of Bethlehem, the most spectacular, visibly, visibly spectacular miracle that took place in all the Bible, a second close would be the parting of the Red Sea. But it was a, a, a multitude, and the scholars tell us that word multitude means thousands of angels appeared singing, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. Um, 
it, can you can you just picture that in your mind? How many of you like looking up at the stars on a clear night, like looking up at the beautiful moon and like? But can you imagine thousands of angels appearing in the heavens and singing glory to God in the highest and giving those shepherds instructions? Those few shepherds, just a few average guys, guys like you and I, just average guys, giving those, give them them, them go and see where the child is, is is born. Go and see. Go and visit him. And uh, again, a powerful, sovereign move of God. And what did the shepherds have to do? They had to obey, right? They had to follow the leading of the Lord. They had a part in it. They had a part. You know, it says in 1 Corinthians 3, 9, we are God's fellow workers. Uh, the King James says we are co-laborers together with God. That this is the beautiful thing about God and his working on the earth. He uses us. He uses us to do his will. We're part of building his eternal kingdom. Can you say amen? We're part of, that's why I tell people when you're praying for souls to be saved, at the same time you're praying for them to be saved, you should be actively witnessing as God leads everywhere you can and everywhere you go. Because we're part of that. Can you say amen? We're part of our own answer to prayer. And it's amazing to me. And, and if you stay sensitive to the Holy Spirit, I've talked to people and they say, I am so discouraged witnessing. I tell people they just don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. Well, that's the part of it that you don't understand. The part of it that says, you know, be led by the Spirit of God. The part of it that says, be in Christ. The part of it that says, seek his face. The part of it that says, live close to him. Because if you're walking in that, you walk in a gas station, like happened to me not long ago. And I looked in the cashier's eyes and her eyes looked so sad. It looked like she had some, I won't go into the description of the ailment she had. It looked like some type of uh, skin ailment. And she looked like she was so sad. And I just felt of the Lord to say, you know, I don't know if you've had any church growing up, but I just... I just feel that I'm going to remind you how much Jesus loves you tonight. She looked at me, her eyes filled with tears. She said, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Talked to her a little bit about God, able to give her my card as an author and encourage her to read some of my articles. But, you know, that's when you're being led by the Spirit, you won't be discouraged. I'm not saying that everyone the Lord will lead you to will receive you, but a large percentage of them will because he knows where hearts are are hungry. Can you say amen? Where people are seeking. And even the Apostle Paul wanted to go one direction in his major missionary journeys. And God said, no, don't go that direction. Go another. And he had to obey the Lord and wanted to, of course, and did. But God knows where hearts are hungry and he knows what's best. So, you know, if, if that would be something if God worked through, you know, a couple of men and a couple of women and angels appearing and angels singing and and all this kind of babies being born and all this was happening around just surrounding a few months. But God's not finished there yet with this story because scholars tell us up to two years before Jesus was born, if these wise men traveled from the Orient, it could have taken them two years to get to where this was by, by their camelback or walking or whatever they did. We put them on camels in the stories. But uh, they were following a star. They were following a star. Now, if you missed this, you've missed one of the most exciting parts of the Christmas story. The star moved. It wasn't just a star that was out there and they just kept going in that direction like we might follow a North Star. Uh, the Bible says that the, the, the star stopped over top of where the baby lay. They were following a moving star. Why should that surprise us? God, God led the children of Israel in the Old Testament with a cloud by day and fire by night, right? He can do anything he wants. Some people believe that that was an angel and they were just seeing the glory of the angel, but it doesn't matter. It could have been a star. It could have been an angel. It could have been who knows what God was using to do that. But it's, it's, it's a powerful story. And, in, and there's never any mention that these wise men had biblical prophecy. Though some people assume that somehow they did of the coming Messiah or this king or this Jewish king. It just said they were following a leading or a teaching or some sort of a prophecy. And we know that God worked in the, through the Gentiles all through the Old Testament. You see it time and time again. We see God using heathen kings. We see God using unsaved people. God, even matter of fact, Rahab, which was a harlot, is in the bloodline of Jesus Christ. God once used a harlot in the story of Jericho. 
God used, un, un, you know, I just get, do you guys get blessed like I do studying these stories? I mean, there, there's just, there's this Christmas story is just unbelievably awesome. And you say, amen. And it all happened surrounding a couple of months. It is absolutely the most complex story of anywhere from Genesis to Revelation of God's interaction between God, man, and angels that you will see anywhere. And as you go about this holiday season, guys, and you're wanting to share something with somebody, their hearts are open. Did, did I tell you? Hey, you know the Charlie Brown Christmas movie? Remember that one? There's where you could start. Let me tell you what more of what happened, you know, or something like that. Start telling people about the beautiful complexity of this story. And if you want to, tell them to Google Nolan Harkness author and read my article. They told me today it's going to be published Christmas Day. Basically, this outline I shared with you tonight, this is the article right here, the largest Christian newspaper in the world for the glory of God. I think they're soon to be outdone by the Epic Times, but we won't, we won't say any more than that. But they're a large paper out of D.C. By God's grace, I'm writing for them. And uh, just uh, just an op-ed writer, that's all. That's all I am. I'm not a paid staff writer for them or anything. But, you know, uh, God is just so awesome. It's like Luke said in the beginning. I want to write down these things that we are absolutely sure of. <laughs> and I want to tell you this story. I want to tell you all about it. And of course, Matthew chooses to write about the wise men and write, writes about Joseph. What an what a awesome, awesome, awesome story. Can you say amen? This, this, this year, this year, can you imagine, I'll conclude with the concluding thought I had in the, in the, in the article. What a Christmas gift to, to God it would be if you were to ask yourself, Lord, how are you using me? How is God using me sovereignly? How is he working sovereignly in my life? What is he speaking in my heart to do? What, what a wonderful Christmas gift back to God it would be to say, here I am, Lord, use me. Say amen. A million years from today, right? Say it with me tonight, guys. Some of you are familiar with this. Millions and millions, say it with me. Millions and millions, and millions and millions, and millions and millions, and millions and millions of years from tonight, we'll still be looking forward to eternity, living in heaven, enjoying the splendors of God. Wow. Let's bow our heads and close in prayer. Thank you, Lord. Oh my goodness, Lord, whatever price you call us to pray, to pray, to pay, I'm sorry, here on this earth, it's worth it all, Lord. It's worth it all. Like the disciples said, where else will we go, Lord? You alone hold the keys of eternal life. Jesus, we love you tonight, and we celebrate your birth. Help our hearts to be filled with your joy this holiday season, filled with singing and wonder and so filled with that hope that people see it within us and want to know the hope that's within us that we might be able to share with them all the wonderful proofs that took place. Direct them to good reading. Direct them to good scripture. Tell them to read Luke chapter 1. Tell them to read Matthew chapter 1. And read about the Christmas story and the wonderful prophecies that were fulfilled in all of it, Lord. In all of it. In John the Baptist coming. In Jesus coming. Oh, Lord, and this wonderful lesson that I believe is hidden in these truths, that you work together with us, the sovereignty of God. We should not be sitting around waiting for you to do something sovereign, doing nothing, but neither should we be trying to do something for you that you've not called us to do, because that's works. But as you speak to our hearts, let us be willing and say, Lord, here I am. Show me what to do. Use me, guide me, direct me, make me fruitful in every good work. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We're going to, before we say amen, just everybody, everybody's head down. Nobody's looking around, just between you and God. Is there anyone in here tonight and you say, I do not know Jesus as my Savior. I've never truly asked him into my heart. Or if I have, I don't know that I was really serious about it. Tonight I want to know that I know that I know that I'm saved. Would you just raise your hand towards heaven if that's you tonight? Anybody where God can see it? God can see it. Trust everyone's being honest before God. 
anyone to say somehow this message spoke to your heart tonight, somehow this challenged me, somehow this uh, 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 caused me to want to dig in further and grow more in my faith with God. Would you raise your hand up where I can see it? Somehow this message spoke to you tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for honest heart. Hallelujah. Lord, bless these men tonight. Bless them as they go. Bless them in their daily routines and their growth in you and their studies. And any time they get to spend with their families over the holidays, keep them close to you in that. Bless that. Keep them safe. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. Thank you, brothers. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you.